Well, hello, traders and investors. My name is Roger Scott. Today is December 29th. It's literally two days before New Year's. I've got a lot to talk about. I got a lot to prepare you for. So what do I say? Let's get into it right now. So overnight futures are a little bit higher. They were higher yesterday, but they settled off. We had a little negative rundown on the Russell yesterday before the close, and the Russell is starting to lag again. NASDAQs are up pretty well, the Dow is up pretty well, the broad market is high, but don't expect a massive week. It's a fragmented week. We got New Year's holiday right here. Anytime you have a fragmented week, especially during uh, Christmas and New Year's, you're gonna have people on vacation, people taking off, people doing their thing. The markets are not gonna be on all four wheels, okay? There's gonna be some fragmentation. There's no major weekly data that's going to be very impactful. We do have jobless claims on Thursday, but again, I think the um, the stimulus, it's what's running the show right now, and that's what I wanna talk about. But again, futures are a little bit up overnight, actually quite a bit over overnight, not the Russell, not the small caps, which is kind of interesting because they've been outperforming the broad market. And again, the jobless report, what we wanna see is we wanna see a number dip down. Anything below 800,000 at this point would be good because these claims are going back up to the pre-COVID levels or pre to the levels that we've seen, not pre-COVID, but the COVID levels that we saw in March and April of this year. I'd like to say last year, but we're still in 2020. So keep your eye on this jobless claim number. That's the big report of the week. But again, I believe the week is fragmented and we're not gonna really see big impact of this till next year. As far as the news, the big news is the Nikkei 225 hit 30 year high after President Trump signed the 900 billion economic package. Wall Street set fresh record on Monday, but again, I'll, I'm gonna show you how momentum levels are overbought. After Trump opted not to veto the bill, helping to staunch uncertainty. Investors have been pushing for their support for months. It combines 900 billion in COVID aid with a 1.4 trillion spending bill and reams of unfinished legislative, legislative spending on taxes, energy, education, and healthcare, which is really good. This healthcare, the part that's going to healthcare is going to be very big, I believe, in the next two years because we have a major issue with healthcare, and I think the government with a Democratic uh, president is going to be more mindful towards healthcare. So we're gonna see a lot of government aid and government spending towards research and health, in my opinion, over the next few years. The hope, the hope is that the measure will help tide the economy over until the vaccinations can bring surging infections under control. I don't know if that's gonna happen or not. I think the markets are gonna be stable. I don't think we're gonna have a crash or anything, but I think we're gonna have to cool off because we need this money and the market was ready to cool off before this, this $900 billion influx. So we gotta be very, very cautious as I will show you why in a minute. Now, the US economy continues to deteriorate under widespread COVID outbreaks, infections, hospitalizations, things are not looking pretty right now. So the promise of more relief for Americans helps reduce uncertainty, which is exactly what we need right now. And crude oil is trading above $48 a barrel, which means frackers are actually making a little bit of money on, the, on a per barrel basis that they're buying. Now, here is the problem that I'm seeing right now, momentum levels. Folks, I know, I know, I know, I'm always too soon to the party, but this is a five-year uh, level. Look at where the NASDAQ is right now. We're in that danger zone. And if you look here, this is a five-year chart. Let me go 10 years. You will see here, one time we've been in this level, two times, three times, four times, five times, six times, seven times, eight times, nine times, 10 times, 11 times in 10 years. So we typically go to these levels once per year. We've already been to these levels twice this year and we're grossly overbought. Now that's the NASDAQ 100. That's the stay-at-home stock. So you may be thinking to yourself, well, that makes sense. That makes sense in light of what's going on. But look at this. This is the S&P 500, and this is, not the fifth, this is not the number of stocks trading above the 50-day moving average. This is the number of stocks trading above the 200-day moving average. If you look at this number right now, you will see that the number is at the highest level we've been since 2011. That's like the highest level we've seen in nine years right here. That's, that's not something laughable, okay? And and if you look at price action, you will see, I'll just show you the NASDAQ, but it's the same. We are having massive, massive divergence between price action right here and the RSI. And eventually it's gonna come and bite us. So am I saying you shouldn't take long trades? No, what I'm saying is you gotta be extra careful 
And because the NASDAQ 100 is still making all-time highs, but the top stocks in the NASDAQ, like NVIDIA and Apple and uh, Facebook, they have been fairly stagnant all the way back since September. So now let me show you what's leading. Right now, money is flowing into global economy, emerging markets, folks. Look at South Korea, for example. Look at that. EWY, that's the strongest global market right now, South Korea, okay? So, so South Pacific, uh, Asia, China, look at China consumer. This is the strongest ETF right now that's consumer-based, CHIQ. This is where the strength is right now. GX, China consumer ETF, CHIQ. That's where the strength is right now. And how about EWY, South Korea? I want to show you something here. Uh, if I could, I can't pull it up right now. I usually have an Excel spreadsheet and it covers tons of ETFs and these are all the way to the upper part. There's one more, this UBOT, this Robotics Artificial Intelligence, which I really like, UBOT, CHIQ, the China Consumer, and EWY. But I like these three assets right now. This is a US asset, I believe. Let me look at the constituents. Uh, it's got a lot of it's got a lot of uh, other stuff in it. That's interesting. Let's see here. Let's see here. No, it's not giving it to us. But again, let's see if we can get this one here. Bots profile. Let's see constituents. Nvidia, ISRG, Brooks Automation. Yeah, these are really good stocks to have right now. So again, if I was a betting man, I would be looking at uh, emerging markets, Asian markets. I would start looking outside of US because the first quarter of a, a new year when a president takes over tends to do really well for emerging markets. So EWY, CHIQ, BOTZ, and also VWO. Let me show you this right now. It's time to start looking a little bit away outside of the US. Look at that. This is a 10 day moving average. We're way above the 50 day line. So VWO, CHIQ, EWY, uh, and the last one was, let me give you that one here. Bots, GX Robotics, Artificial Intelligence. Who wouldn't want that one, right? It's actually this, this is the one, UBOT, UBOT, U-B-O-T. But that's where I'm looking right now. And this is a, a fresh ETF. It just started trading a little while ago and it's already at like a year and a half, two years ago. And if you look at this chart over time, you will see that they're doing something right. But the bottom line is I think US stocks are getting a little bit top heavy. South Korea, China, Chinese consumer stocks, CHIQ, UBOT, artificial intelligence, start looking at ETFs for the next few weeks. I think that's the best place to be, and I think emerging markets is the way to go. Now, folks, I'm willing to bet most of you don't know this, but a stock market pattern has been repeating itself since 1989. And I kind of talked a little bit about it during this video. You might have not caught up on it. But in the year of a new president inauguration, an explosive market hidden inside your brokerage account has historically proven to soar. And yes, you have access to this market inside a regular stock brokerage account. Even if you don't like President-elect Joe Biden, the reputation of Democrats favoring smaller companies previously doubled the size of some of the companies in the sector. Folks, it's about making money. It's not about your political affiliation anymore. Forget about that. Leave it alone. Whatever it is, God bless you. Let's talk about making money. Making money. Doesn't matter who the president's going to be. We want to make money from whoever it is. So once Biden is sworn in, big things could be on the horizon for your portfolio if you know where to look. And again, the reputation of Democrats favoring smaller previously smaller companies previously doubled the size of some of these companies. So there's some real strong upside potential. So again, once Biden is sworn in, things can really go off the rails in a big way, in a positive way. Again, there's a lot of markets. I'm going to be talking about it. I'm going to spend an hour with James West on it. But you got to click the link below and you'll discover what I'm calling my number one prediction of the year. My number one prediction of the year. You cannot afford to miss this. 
I do this every year. This is my third year in a row. You guys are going to have the best time ever. You're going to learn a lot. You got to follow the link below. You're going to learn my number one prediction for the year. You do not want to miss this out. This is going to be the best presentation ever. You're going to get some amazing nuggets from myself and James West. Check this out. Follow the link below. This is an opportunity to start the new year, 2021, on the right track. Leave 2020 behind and make a change. Hopefully, make a change in your life. You know, always try to make new changes positive for your life. You know, like people go to the gym New Year's. Make, make a plan and stick with it. Make some money in 2021. I'll talk to you guys later. But again, click on the link below to discover what I'm calling my number one prediction of the year. You don't want to miss this. And I hope each and every one of you has an amazing, amazing 2021. Leave me some feedback here. Bye, guys.